Okay, so today we will discuss the few problems based on the ratio test. Using the ratio test, we can solve those uh, problems, and also we will discuss the few of the uh, results which are also needed for further study. Uh, so let's see. We have gone through the ratio test. The ratio test says. that if a n be a sequence of uh, positive numbers, if a n s are sequence of the positive numbers of positive real numbers and if limit of this a n plus 1 over a n as n tends to infinity is say l and when if l is greater than 1 then limit of the sequence a n as n tends to infinity will be diverging and diverges to infinity and the second part of it shows that if uh, limit of this l lies between minus 1 and plus 1 then the limit of a n as n tends to infinity is 0 and particular case is when a n s r when l is less than 1 then in that case we are uh, negative then we will see that all negative terms then we can apply take the minus sign and get the resource okay, for alternative. So, let us see the exercise based on this. Suppose it is given that <coughs> we have the sequence one is um, find the find limit of a n as n tends to infinity where a n's are is of the form n to the power p x to the power n where p is positive or negative rational number, where p is p is a rational number, positive or negative rational number, rational numbers okay. and x is a real quantity, x is real, x is real. Okay. Now, if we look this apply the formula. So, what is a n plus 1 over a n? If we look this, it comes out to be 1 plus 1 by n raised to the power p x. Now, when n tends to infinity, p is fixed. So, this term will go to 1 and basically the limit of this when n tends to infinity is nothing but x. So, when x is greater than 1, so according to the ratio test, if the limit of a n plus 1 over n is l, where l is greater than 1, the limit of a n will be plus infinity, when l lies between minus 1 to plus 1, the limit will be 0. So, limit of this a n over n is infinity if x is greater than 1 and 0 for x lying between minus 1 and plus 1. Okay. And when x is equal to 1, then it reduces to the form n to the power p and the behavior of n to the power p we have already there. If p is positive, it will go to plus infinity. When p is negative, it will go to 0. So, when x is 0, it is equivalent to the limit n to the power p as n tends to infinity, which will be plus infinity if p is positive and minus infinity and 0 and 0 if p is negative and for p is equal to 1 also it will be. Okay. So, this is and when 
x is less than equal to 1 if x is less than or equal to minus 1 then what happens this sequence mod x n uh, less than equal to 1 the sequence is minus 1 to the power n minus 1 to the power n and then it will keep on oscillatory and oscillating so the mod of a n will go to plus infinity and o n's n's are age and oscillatory infinite oscillatory infinite okay similarly when p is negative similarly when p is negative then in that case also the same thing happen it is uh, again this will be x greater than 1 it is infinity x lying between minus 1 is go 0 and for other it so the same results as 1 same as 1 ok that is one. So, this will give the ok second x let us see. So, exercise 2 suppose find the limit of limit of x to the power n factorial n as n tends to infinity where x is any real number any real number. Now, again apply the ratio test. So, y ratio test what happens to this a n plus 1 over a n as n tends to infinity it comes out to be what limit of this as n tends to infinity x over n plus 1. So, whatever the x may be this limit will go to 0 for any x real it means this limit will always be 0 for all x ok. Third <coughs> find the limit of this limit of factorial n to the power 1 by n as n tends to infinity factor n 1 by n. Now, to solve this uh, limit let us use the previous one. We know the limit of x to the power n factorial n is tending to 0 is 0 when so use the use exercise 2. So, from exercise 2 it implies that factorial n goes much faster than comparative to x to the power n that is this is always we get than n for n sufficiently large say n naught because then only it uh, uh, because it is tending to 0 it means the denominator is going much faster to infinity comparative to x to the power n therefore it will uh, uh, factor n will be greater than x after a certain stage say n is greater than n naught. Therefore, x factory n to the power 1 by n will be greater than x and this is true for any x for any x belongs to r. It means the limit of this thing limit of this factory n to the power 1 by n as n tends to infinity will exceed to any number a will exceed to any number a for any any positive number a howsoever large howsoever large and this shows this only possible the limit of this is infinity limit of this will be infinity. So, it will be followed by this ok. Now, this can exercise for find the limit of find limit of a n when n tends to infinity where a n is 1 3 5 then 
2 n minus 1 over 2 4 6 up to 2 n. Suppose this is our n. Okay. Now, these are all positive terms. So, I apply the ratio set by ratio test a n plus 1 over a n this comes out to be what 2 n plus 1 over 2 n plus 2 n plus 1 is n is n plus 1 2 n plus 1 and 2 n plus 2. So, the limit of this as n tends to infinity is the limit of this as n tends to infinity divide by n. So, when you divide by n it comes out to 2 plus 1 by n over 2 plus 2 by n and limit as n tends to infinity and that will come out to be 1. It means the limit of this n as n tends to 1 is convergent and we goes to limit is 2 n plus 1 by 2 n. Okay. This limit um, what is this is 1 sorry is 1. Now, what the ratio test says? The ratio test, if you look the ratio test, the ratio test says when a n is a sequence of positive numbers such that limit a n plus 1 over a n is l, when l is greater than 1, limit will be plus infinity, when l lying between minus 1 to 1, limit is 0, but it does not say anything about l is 1. When l is 1, the series, the sequence a n may converge may not converge because it depends on the type of the sequence. We cannot say the limit is 0 or limit is infinity or limit is finite. We have to compute that. So, here the ratio test fails here ratio test fails. We are unable to get it. So, what to do then in that case we have to apply our previous knowledge that we know if a sequence which is a monotonically decreasing or monotonically increasing sequence and if it is bounded monotonic increasing bounded above monotonic decreasing bounded below then such a sequence will definitely have a limit. So, let us find out whether this sequence is a monotonically sequence or not. Now, here if we look 2 n, n plus 1 over n this comes out to be 2 n plus 1 over 2 n plus 2. It means that this is total thing this total is less than 1 since uh, since the ratio a n plus 1 over a n is coming to be 2 n plus 1 over 2 n plus denominator is higher than the numerator. So, ratio is strictly less than 1. So, it means the n a term is larger than n plus 1. So, when n 1 2 3 etcetera it keeps on decreasing therefore, the sequence a n is a monotone decreasing sequence is a decreasing sequence. Okay. And since a n's are all positive and since a n's are positive, so it decreases and at the most it will go to positive number. So, n because so sequence a n is convergent. This is one thing which is clear from this concept. Okay. We are interested in finding the limit now. So, it is it's that convergence part is clear that the sequence has to converge, but what will be the limit that is. So, let us see the a n s again. What is a n? a n was 1 3 5 up to 2 n minus 1 over 2 4 6 up to 2 n. Now, can you not say it is less than if I write 2 3 is 4 5 6 up to 2 n okay? and this part I am just increasing 3 5 7 2 n plus 1. So, this term because 1 is less than 2 or 1 by 2 is less than 2 by 3 you can say like that. So, 1 by or 2 is less than so 1 by 2 is greater than 3. 1 by uh, 1 by 3 is greater than 1 by 2 and like. This. So, this will be 1 by 2 is less than 
2 by 3, 3 by 4 is less than 4 by 5, 5 by 6 is less than 6 and like this. So, we can say this is less than because half is less than 2 by 3, 3 by 4 is strictly less than the 4 by 5 and continue. So, we can say this. Okay. So, n is less than this, n is this. So, n square will be less than less than the product of these two 1 3 5 2 n minus 1 2 4 6 2 n into product of this 2 4 6 2 n divided by 3 5 7 2 n plus 1 and that comes out to be 1 by over 2 n plus 1. So, n square is coming to be 1 by 2. Therefore, the limit of a n square is tending to 0 because a n s are positive. So, limit cannot go negative, it can go at the most 0 and a n square is less than this as n is sufficiently large the limit is tending to 0. So, it means the a n limit must go to 0 as n tends to infinity. So, that will be the answer for this. Okay. So, this is what now, uh, there are others also, but before going few, let us take one uh, uh, result which is given by the Cauchy and so, before going this, let us see the result which is known as the Cauchy's first theorem on limit. On limits. So, what this theorem says? If, if the sequence a n if the sequence a n converges to L then the sequence the sequence x n where x n is a 1 plus a 2 plus a n y n also converges to L. also converges to L. Let us really result 1. Okay. Can we put it as an exercise also, but uh, because this is a standard result, so we can say put it as a result 1. So, what he says is if suppose a n sequence are convergent, then their mean arithmetic mean basically it is a arithmetic mean, mean of this will also converge to L. That is the first result. So, let us see the proof of this result or solution of this. Uh, what is given is a n converges to L as n tends to infinity. It means the difference between a n and L that is for a given epsilon L greater than 0, there exists an n naught such that the mod of a n minus L is less than epsilon L for n sufficiently large. Okay. So, what we can do is we can say that so we can assume or we can take a n's edge l plus epsilon l n where epsilon l n is convergent this sequence is convergent and tending to 0. 0 as n tends to infinity. So, when n tends to infinity, the sequence epsilon l goes to 0. It means a n minus l can be made as small as we please after a certain stage. Okay. So, let us suppose. Now, consider x n. So, consider x n. x n is a 1 plus a 2 plus a 3 
a n divided by n. So, substitute a 1 in terms of epsilon r 1. So, we what we get is if I substitute a 1 is l plus epsilon r 1 a 2 is l plus epsilon r 2 as a. So, this is n times l divided by l. So, l plus epsilon r 1 epsilon r 2 epsilon r n divided by n. Okay? We get this. Now, we wanted the sequence x n goes to l. It means if I prove that this second term this second term goes to 0 as n tends to infinity then it will. So, required to prove is the sequence epsilon l 1 epsilon l 2 plus epsilon l n divided by n. This sequence basically converges to 0 as n tends to infinity. This here. Once we prove then x n will go to l. Okay. Now, since epsilon l n is a convergent sequence, converging to 0, converging to 0. So, it is a boundary sequence. So, it is bounded sequence because every convergent sequence is bounded. So, there exists a k such that mod of epsilon r n is less than or equal to k uh, for all n for all n there exists a positive k just ok and further epsilon r n tends to 0. So, we get and further since epsilon r n tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. So, for a given epsilon l greater than 0, there exists an n naught such that mod of epsilon l n can be made less than epsilon l for n greater than or equal to say n naught. Okay? Now, consider now this one. Consider mod of epsilon l 1, epsilon l 2, epsilon l n divided by n. Now, this will be less than equal to mod epsilon l 1 epsilon l 2 plus epsilon l n naught divided by n plus epsilon l n naught plus 1 epsilon l n naught plus 2 up to epsilon l n divided by n. Okay? I have chosen this. Now, when n is greater than n naught the mode of epsilon l is less than it means each of this term is less than epsilon l. So, total becomes n minus n naught. So, this will be less than n minus n naught times n minus n naught times and then this is what uh, this is equal less than epsilon l divided by n plus. Now, this term each term is bounded by k. So, this is bounded by k it means this is less than n naught times k divided by n is it not. Now, n naught k if I choose n naught is fixed k is fixed. So, if I take epsilon l such that that n naught k by n is less than say epsilon l then what happens. So, is this is less than epsilon l plus epsilon l provided n is greater than n is greater than n naught k by epsilon l. If I take n to be greater than this, then this part is less than epsilon l. This is less than 1. So, this is already less than epsilon l. So, total is less than 2 epsilon l. So, this part when n is sufficiently large goes to 0. There once it goes to 0, then this sequence x n will go to L. So, x n will go to L as n tends to infinity. Is it okay? That is why. This is the first Cauchy theorem on the limits. The second Cauchy theorem that is the result to which is also we call it as a Cauchy's. Uh, which is second theorem on limit.
on limits. What this theorem says is if if sequence n be a sequence of positive number positive numbers sequence of positive number and limit and limit of a n n plus 1 divide by a n as n tends to infinity is l and limit of this is say l then limit of n to the power 1 by n as n tends to infinity will also be l. So, that gives me means if the ratio of this sequence is, is l then the nth root of this a n will also have the limit l. So, let us see the proof of this. Okay. What is given is that this ratio is l given a n plus 1 over a n limit of this as n tends to infinity is l. It means that is for given f sin l greater than 0 there exists say m such that mod of a n minus a n plus 1 over n minus l is less than f sin l for all n greater than equal to m. Okay. So, what do you it means this implies that a m plus 1 y a m this term lies between l minus f sin l and l plus f sin l. Okay. Now, if we continue this a m plus 2 by a m plus 1 lies between l plus f sin l l minus f sin l and like this up to say an a term which is a n over a n minus 1 lies between l minus f sin l l plus f sin l. Just continue. Now, find the product because these are all positive quantity remember because a n is a sequence of positive these are all positive greater than 0, greater than 0, greater than 0. So, this is also positive. So, once they are positive we can multiply without getting the change in their inequality. Okay. So, when you multiply this thing what you get these are total n minus m terms. So, here we get l minus m. So, this implies that l minus f sin l to the power n minus m is less than if you multiply this. So, the cross this uh, telescopically it getting cancelled. So, a n over a m is left only. So, a n over a m a n over m and which is less than l plus f sin l to the power n minus m okay, where n is greater than m. <coughs> now, divide by l minus f sin l to the power minus m. So, if I divide because this is positive quantity. So, again when you divide. So, this implies that which implies that l minus f sin l to the power n is less l minus a is less than is less than if I divide by this then what you are getting a n over a m n over a m into l minus f sin l to the power m because this will come because this is positive because l minus f sin l is positive. So, we can do like that. Now, take the power 1 by n. So, what we get from here is uh, and similarly when you take l plus f sin l to the power n here also we get this is greater than a n over a m a n over a m into l plus f sin l to the power m. Okay. 
now this part l plus m is greater than 1 uh, sorry this a n by m. So, now from here again. So, what we get basically? So, we get therefore, we get l minus f sin l to the power n is less than a n over a m n over a m l m is less than is less than l plus f sin l to the power n just like is it not so that is not now take this term here so we get l minus f sin a n a m over l m okay raised to the power 1 by n into l minus f sin l into l minus f sin l is less than a n to the power 1 by n which is less than a n a m over l to the power m raised to the power 1 by n l plus f sin l. Okay? Let it be 1. Clear? Now, since limit of this a m over l to the power m by 1 by n as n tends to infinity is 1. Why? Because this is fixed a m sorry the a m fixed point l m is also fixed. So, this is some constant power 1 by n. So, when n is sufficiently large the limit will go to 1. It means this term will lie between 1 minus f sin l and 1 plus f sin l. Okay. So, we can say that this limit entire thing l minus f sin l uh, this part can be. So, we can say this uh, limit even. So, what we get is therefore, this entire thing lies between uh, here. So, therefore, we get uh, L minus f sin l minus f sin l is less than less than a m by l m a m by l m raised to the power 1 by n L minus f sin l L minus f sin l which is less than L minus f sin l plus f sin l. Why? Okay. This a m minus 1 by L because it is uh, this entire thing. This entire thing lies between L minus f sin l and then minus 1. Okay. So, this will be uh, uh, this one tending to 1 basically. So, this limit will go to L minus f sin l only basically L minus f. So, this total thing will lie L minus f sin l minus 1 and L minus 1 f sin l. Similarly, this term will also lie between the similarly we can say L plus f sin l L plus f sin l minus f sin l less than a m over L m raised to the power 1 by n L plus f sin l which is less than L plus f sin l plus f sin l. So, what we conclude is that if I look this entire thing a n to the power 1 by n, a n to the power 1 the lower bound will be L minus 2 f sin l, this will be the lower bound and for a n by 1 by n upper bound will be this. So, this 1 and 2 if we combine then we get from here is L minus 2 f sin l is less than a n to the power 1 by n is L plus 2 f sin l. So, as n tends to infinity the limit of this a n to the power 1 by n limit of this is nothing but L and this proves the result. Okay. Now, here when it is L is in uh, when L is greater than sufficiently large then this limit will go to infinity also infinity in fact. Okay. So, that is now, as a corollary to these results, as an exercise, we can say uh, if a1, a2, a1, a2, a etcetera is a sequence of positive number, positive number, 
numbers such that such that uh, n goes to l n goes to l where l is greater than 0 then a 1 a 2 a n raised to the power 1 by n goes to l. So, let us see the solution of the a 1 a 2 is a sequence of positive numbers such that limit of a n is l where l is positive then the nth root of this product that is geometric basically uh, geometric mean of this will also tends to l. The solution based on the previous uh, Cauchy theorem first theorem on the limit that if a x a n goes to l then the mean value of a 1 plus a 2 plus a n by n will also go to l. So, here we assume that if a n converges to l then log of a n will go to log l this is our assumption. here assume that if a n goes to l then log of n will go to log n. In fact, this we will show it uh, that log is a continuous function when a n is positive of course, well defined then continuous function has a property that it transfer the convergence sequence to the convergence sequence. So, log because of it is a continuous function. So, it will transfer the convergence sequence to convergence, but here since we have not gone to the continuous function so far. So, let us assume here that when a n goes to l then logarithm of this will also go to l. Okay. Now, <coughs> so it is given. So, this is now given because a n is given. So, we can assume that log n goes to n. Apply the Cauchy's first theorem on limit. So, what we get? Their mean that is log of uh, geometric mean of this second sorry, this is the second theorem. Second theorem. So, apply the mean of this uh, first theorem, mm, we will get the first theorem, yes. So, log of a 1 plus log of a 2 plus log of a n a n divided by n will also go to log l by that throw, but this product is nothing but the log of a 1 a 2 a n and power 1 by n will go to log n by property of log. So, this shows that edge n tends to infinity, edge n tends to infinity. Okay. So, this implies limit of this a 1 a 2 a n raised to the power 1 by n edge n tends to infinity will be n and that proves the result for it. Okay. Now, let us see the other exercise. If S1, S2 are positive, are positive, are positive, and Sn plus one, and S1, S2 are positive, and Sn plus one is half of Sn plus Sn minus 1 half of S n and S n minus 1 then prove that prove that the sequence prove that the sequence is S 2 n plus 1 and sequence S 2 n are both monotone. are both monotone the one increases another decreases okay are both monotone and find the limit of this okay find the limits limit okay so let's see the solution for it what is given is that given 
Sn plus 1 is half of Sn, Sn plus 1, Sn minus 1, sorry, Sn minus 1. This is given. So, let us assume S1 and S2 are two number where S1 is greater than S2. Let us assume this. So, S3 from here is S1 plus S2. Uh, no, S3. So, n is equal to 2. So, S2 plus S1 by 2. This will be the S3. It means between S1 and S2, here is S1, this is S2. Here we are getting S3, which is the average of this, the mean of S1 and S2. So, we get S1 greater than S3 greater than S2. Okay? Similarly. Now, S4, S4 is nothing but what? When n is 3, we get S3, S2 by 2. So, S4 is lying between what? Because this S3 and S2 in between S3 and S2. So, we get there is S1 greater than S3 greater than S4, greater than S2 and like this continue this. So, what we get? So, we get a sequence who, which have this S1 is greater than S3, a, greater than S3, greater than S4, greater than S2, uh, greater than uh, S5 greater than S4, greater than S2, like this, say 5 term, what will happen 5 is 4 plus 3 S4 plus S3 by 2. So, S4, S3 in between S3 and S4 it will lie and like this. So, what we get that when a suffix are odd S1, S3, S5, it is decreasing. When suffix are even, it is increasing S2, S4, S6 and so on. So, basically this implies the sequence of the odd numbers S2 n plus 1 is a monotonic decreasing sequence. Decreasing sequence while the sequence 2 n is a monotonic increasing sequence. S2 n is a monotonic S2 n that is the same uh, S2 n. So, this is n S3 S5 it is a uh, yes decreasing and S2 n is monotonic increasing sequence increasing sequence. So, we get this is a monotonic decreasing and monotonic increasing sequence. So, convert uh, now when it is a monotonic decreasing sequence, but it is bounded below by S2, but bounded below by it, but bounded below by S2 because S1 and S2 are fixed. So, it is convergent. S2 n is again decreasing, S2 a is increasing, but it is bounded above by S1, bounded above by S1. So, this shows that both the sequence are convergent. So, both are convergent sequence, convergent sequence. Then whether they will converge to the same limit or not? Let us see. So, if we consider this difference S 2 n plus 1 minus S 2 n, consider this difference. So, what we are getting is half S 2 n plus S 2 n minus 1, because S 2 n apply the formula minus S 2 n. So, that comes out to be minus half S 2 n minus S 2 n minus 1. It means when you take S 2 n plus 1 minus S 2 n, it is half of the S 2 n minus S 2 n. So, continue this. If I continue this then 
then what you are getting? You are getting S 2 n plus 1 minus S 2 n basically comes out to be what? Minus half raised to the power uh, uh, that is mi uh, minus half raised to the power 2 n minus 1 2 n minus 1 s 2 minus s 1 ok s 2 n minus 1. Now, this will be equal to s 1 my because s 1 is greater than s 2. So, we can take half 2 to the power n minus 1 s 1 minus s 2. Now, this is positive, but this is fixed here this will go to 0. So, it tends to 0 as n tends to infinity because half is less than 1 and therefore, both the sequence limit of this s 2 n plus 1 as n tends to is the same as limit of s 2 n as n. Okay. So, both converges to the same limit say L. Okay. Now, to find out the limit of this, okay, so we get to find L, we consider 2 S n plus 1 S n twice S n plus 1 plus S n, this will be equal to what? S n plus S n minus 1 plus S n, because S n plus 1 is S n plus S n minus 1 by 2, so 2 of this. So, this will be equal to what? 2 S n plus s n minus 1. Now, as n tends to infinity, as n tends to infinity, this s n plus 1. Okay. Now, again when you take 2 s n plus 1 is plus s n is 2 s n. Similarly, if I continue this process, what we get? This is also equal to in the final term, we get 2 s 2 plus s 1, because this is a <coughs> so, this is equal to basically this. So, as n tends to infinity, this will give 2 L, this is L equal to 2 S 2 plus S 1. Therefore, L becomes S 1 plus 2 S 2 by 3 and that is the answer for it. Okay. So, this clear. So, we get now I will write few problems that will be uh, used as a tutorials. So, you, uh, one can try those problems. Okay. So, tutorials and then uh, you can disc, uh, find the solution which is very easy. Okay. Uh, say first example, we have to do this part using the epsilonal delta definition, using the definition using definition of limit of a sequence limit of a sequence sequence to establish the following the using the definition establish the following limits, following limits, limit of this as n tends to infinity is n square minus 1 over 2 n square plus 3 equal to half, okay. n square plus 1 second b is uh, second is limit as n tends to infinity 3 n plus 1 over 2 n plus 5 is 3 by 2 like this. Okay. Limit third limit of this minus 1 to the power n into n divided by n square plus 1 is 0 as n tends to infinity. Okay. Then limit of this that is all. Now, if we look that without epsilonal definition, we can just find the limit very quickly. So, n is sufficiently large. So, when we substitute n infinity, infinity by infinity in determinant. So, what we do is we divide by n, n square 
and get the result. A 1 minus 1 by n square 2 plus 3 by n square. So, when n is sufficiently large, it becomes 1 by 2. But how to uh, get the result? Say hint, suppose I wanted to for us. So, for any epsilon greater than 0, for given epsilon greater than 0, find n naught such that mod of this part n square minus 1 2 n square plus 3 minus half should be made less than epsilon. So, from here you start it consider this minus this. Now, this can be written as when you take the LCM to 2 n square plus 3 and what you get 2 n square minus 1. So, minus 2 n square is cancelling. So, minus 2 and then minus 3. So, this will be now here we are getting minus 5 by 2. Okay. So, what we are getting is this we want it to be less than f sin. Say this we want it to be less than f sin. So, what is it means that is this will give 5 by 2 2 n square plus 3 is less than f sin. That is 2 n square plus 3 is greater than 2 f sin over 5. So, what we get n square is greater than 2 f sin l 1 5 minus 3 divided by 2 okay, divided by 2 2 f sin over 5 minus 3 divided by 2. So, this will be the n square take the positive value of this. So, n is sufficiently take the positive value. So, n square must be this number. So, n must be greater than this under root of this part. So, if we take n square to be this number, we get the results. Okay. So, that is what model is there 2 n square minus 2 and 2 n square minus 3. So, that becomes that. Is it okay? So, we can choose because this is this may be negative uh, epsilon by 5 and then 2 by 5. So, minus 3 uh, here is some uh, problem. So, let it be it is okay, but uh, uh, what we can do is we can choose the positive part of it okay, greater than this that is uh, this has to be positive f sin to be chosen. So, that this becomes positive 2 n square is greater than oh that is wrong number wrong 5 by 2 I am sorry that is what is a mistake here mistake is. Mm, when you write it, this becomes 5 by 2 f sin r. Yeah, that is the mistake 5 by 2 f sin r. Because otherwise it is a negative, so it will be problem. Now, f sin r is very small quantity. So, we can choose f sin r so small, so that this becomes positive. Therefore, n can get a then half 5 by 2 f sin r minus 3 under root. That is a and take the integral value of this. So, n naught becomes integral part of this plus some number 1 more. So, when you choose n to be greater than this number, you will get already this part. Okay? So, do it with that. I think thank you very much, but uh, we will do some more problem later. Thank you. Thanks. Okay.